So let's talk a little bit of physics here. So what I've got here is the heating module out of a popcorn maker with some silica gel packets in it. Now I have got a fixed heat input here of 60 volts at 1.3 amps. So that's close to 100 watts. Call it... Uh, what would that be? Yeah, around 90 to 100 watts if you'd do the maths accurately, which we're not going to do, but we know it's close to 100 watts. So what I've done is I've connected the motor to a separate power supply, so I can vary the airflow through this by changing the speed of the fan. Now, if I change the airflow through this, the temperature of the air through coming out of this is going to change. Now, anybody who'd been around older window aircon units, window shakers, knows that they had um, a low and high speed for the fan, and they had resistance heaters, they were not heat pumps. So in other words, the heat input, or output from it, or the energy input, was fixed. And if you ran it on low speed, the air coming out of it felt hotter. And it, for many people, created the illusion that the thing was reheating the room faster. And that's not the case. You're heating less air. You're putting energy into less air, the same amount of energy, so it's coming out hotter. Because energy's heat capacity is 700 joules per kilogram per Kelvin that you're raising the temperature. So, if you're putting in 700 joules into a kilogram of air, you raise the temperature by 1 degree Celsius or Kelvin. If you put 700 joules into 500 grams of air, you'll have raised the temperature by 2 Kelvin, and the air is going to feel hotter. And that's what's happening with those old window air cons, and it's happening here. So let's put my thermometer back on. Is it timed out? So what I'm going to do is bring up the voltage on the fan. And you're going to hear it speed up. Now what's happening here is it's actually... extracting some of the heat out of the silica. The temperature has gone up. Let's bring it up even further. And that silica was cooking quite nicely. The thing had been st it stabilized. It's been running like this for quite some time. So I've currently got 5 volts on the motor. So you can see that briefly the temperature started coming up as the air was being heated by the energy in the silica gel beads but now that we've got more airflow coming through here and it's removing energy from the silica gel we've um, been left with the energy in the air so there you can see over there the air temperature is coming down we were at 55 previously it came up briefly because the silica gel was very hot and we've now got a more laminar airflow coming out of this because the velocity is higher so now to my touch the air feels cooler but are we still are we now heating the room at a slower rate because uh, the air feels cooler no we are putting the same amount of energy into the air the um, the same applies to any gas or liquid or solid it's it's all has to do with mass and energy and specific heat capacity <coughs> and an interesting side note when I was reading up on specific heat capacities is that ice has actually got a little less than half the specific heat capacity of water so when the phase change happens and water becomes a solid 
the specific heat capacity is reduced. So therefore, once water becomes ice, it requires half the amount of energy removed from the water to change its temperature by the same amount that it would have when it was water. Uh, I mean removing energy from the ice. You get the picture, okay? So, there you can see the temperatures come down to 36. Okay? And it feels cooler. But when I had the fan running very slowly, we were able to produce air of 60 degrees C out of this. And um, that's our little talk on uh, putting energy into air and how the amount of air that you're heating affects the temperature of the air. That's a little demonstration over here. And one of the reasons I was thinking of running the motor off separate supply to control the temperature, well, to control the airflow, is because I wanted to control the temperature. I want to be able to get this silica gel hotter while not at the same time putting a huge amount of energy into the surroundings because I'm only wanting to heat what's inside here so I want minimal airflow so I can slow this fan down and only heat have a small amount of air coming through here only drying out my silica so there's a practical tip and I thought it was an interesting demonstration we could have a nice talk about it so there you have it I think that's the end of my little uh, discussion here. Hope the uh, the visual was interesting and you learned something. Found it fascinating. Ladies and gentlemen, take care. Have an awesome day further. We'll see you next time for more stuff. Cheers.